Good evening and welcome to the record, how culturally diverse communities are using Wikipedia. Uh, my name is James Gaunt. I'm Communications and Project Coordinator for Wikimedia Australia, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, I first want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the many lands we're on this evening. I'm on the traditional land of the Wurundjeri, Wurrung and Boorong people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay respects to the elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge them as the first knowledge holders of this land. Um, I'd like to now hand over to Steve Bundaji Horawat. Word of Aaron, greetings. Um, I'm a Ladle man from Gunana Mornington Island, and I just want to pay respects to uh, the lands of the Aranda people, Aranda nations um, that I'm residing on and work in Central Australia, and also the uh, neighbouring Walpuri, Luritja, and Anangu Pijanjara peoples from uh, Central regions. Thank you, Steve. Um, if you'd like to acknowledge the name of the country you're zooming in from, please feel free to share it in the chat. Uh, we also acknowledge any First Nations people joining us on this call this evening. Uh, so welcome to everyone who's been coming in, in the meantime. Uh, the presentations tonight are being recorded and will be made available on YouTube over the next week. Uh, we invite you to leave your camera on so our presenters can see your faces, but you're welcome to have them off too. Uh, microphones have been disabled, but the chat is open. During the presentations, we invite you to share your questions in the chat, and at the end, we'll gather them together to share with our presenters. Uh, we hope time will allow for every question to be answered, but this may not be possible. Um, please also note the Q&A section will not be recorded, so you can ask anything. Uh, so this event is part of the Record Australian Music on Wikipedia, uh, a partnership between Wikimedia Australia and the Australian Council for the Arts to increase the, vi in, uh, so the visibility, not the invisibility, the visibility of Australian content on Wikipedia, specifically around music. So I'd like to thank everyone from the Australian Council for their support. We have presentations from around the world sharing how they use Wikipedia or other, or other Wikimedia projects to share their cultures and histories. Uh, I hope that tonight will inspire you to think about ways that uh, we can all contribute to these projects and please reach out to us at Wikimedia Australia uh, if you'd like to discuss ways we can support you. So it's just been put in the chat as well, the, um, the record link. Um, we'll de detail some further opportunities later on, um, but first I thought I'd start with a bit of an intro. Um, I'm sure you all know what Wikipedia is. You may be asking, though, what is Wikimedia? Is it the same as Wikipedia? Who are Wikimedia Australia? And so before we kick off our main presentations, I'll just give you a quick introduction uh, to Wikimedia and the movement. So this will be uh, a very quick overview, but we do have events across this month if you'd like to learn more about how to edit Wikipedia. So just see our website for details. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, in January 2001, uh, Wikipedia was launched as an encyclopedia open to everyone to edit or create new articles on. And by December 2001, there were 19,000 articles on Wikipedia already. By February 6th this year, that had grown to over 6 million articles on English Wikipedia because, yes, Wikipedia is also available in other languages. Uh, in fact, there's over 300 languages now, um, and there's an average of 381,000 editors alone on English Wikipedia across the world, and in January they made 6 million edits. Um, I did mention Wikipedia is in different languages. Uh, here's just a few of those. You can see the full list on the Wikipedia website as well, though. So the Wikimedia Foundation was established in 2003 as a non-profit way to fund Wikipedia and other wiki projects. Uh, they're mainly financed through the millions of small donations from Wikipedia readers. You probably saw that little pop-up at the end of last year asking for your money. Um, while other tech companies employ thousands of people, the Wikimedia Foundation are quite small, uh, as a community such as the Wikipedia editors are all volunteers. So the Wikimedia Foundation fund chapters around the world like Wikimedia Australia. And last year, um, Wikimedia Australia hired their first two staff members, um, including me and Belinda Spry, who's on the call as well. Um, and previously it was run completely by volunteers. We provide training and support for people across the country. Um, and we'd love to hear from you if you've got some ideas for other things we could do. But it's not all about the encyclopedia. It's not all about Wikipedia. There's many other Wikimedia projects. Um, and so I'll just highlight two. 
So we've got Wikimedia Commons, uh, where you can upload photos, audio, video, and share it under a Creative Commons license. And then we have Wikisource, which is uh, where, for example, public domain books can be uploaded and transcribed by volunteers. So one of the things we try to focus on is improving content on Wikipedia, either by adding new articles or perhaps just adding better references to those existing articles so they're better resources. Um, but why does this matter? Why, why does Wikipedia matter? Uh, because it's one of the most popular websites in the world, basically. Uh, when you search for something online, it's often one of the first results, and the information from Wikipedia is also used as a source for Google's info boxes. Basically, it's popular and often the first place that people look to find information, so it needs to be accurate and represent the subjects written about. Unfortunately, there are biases. So this map is showing uh, Wikipedia articles which have been tagged with location. So for example, the article about Sydney Opera House has a location data, uh, so it can show a map. As you can see by the white areas, the articles written about tend to be focused on Europe, the east coast of America, and likewise, east coast of Australia. So while this map specifically shows location data that was included in articles, it also highlights um, a southern hemisphere uh, not, not bias, a northern hemisphere bias, and that the southern hemisphere is very unrepresented on Wikipedia. So there's articles on North American subjects, uh, which tend to be quite larger than those written about Australia, for example. There are also gender gaps on Wikipedia. So on the English Wikipedia, uh, just 19% of biographies are about women and approximately 80% are about men. So biographical articles about women are also more often nominated for deletion. And part of this comes back to available references. So it's really difficult to find reliable references for people who haven't been written about or who haven't been given the same coverage as others in society. So in this way, society's biases are very much reflected on Wikipedia. There are projects on Wikipedia which aim to amend those biases. So one of them is called Women in Red, which promotes creating, a, uh, creating new articles about women. Um, and they're also like a really lovely community to be part of. There's other, other projects as well, uh, which have their own subject interests. Um, and they're focused around uh, different cultural identities or the arts, things like that. So Wikimedia Australia is committed to providing training and support for First Nations people uh, or organisations wanting to add or improve content on Wikipedia. Today, we announced uh, a new opportunity, uh, which will be perfect for any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people interested in research or music or just wanting to spend more time improving Wikipedia. Um, so as part of the record, we are launching a First Nations Wikipedia in residence Applications are open now with full details on our website, uh, link in chat, I think. Um, so the successful applicant will have a space to work at the State Library of Queensland for 10 weeks with support from their First Nations librarians. Uh, the resident will also uh, be provided with $5,000 and training from Wikimedia Australia. And they'll be able to improve Australian First Nations content uh, specifically around music. Um, yeah, so I hope some of you here tonight will apply or pass this on to anyone who might be interested. So that's the end of my quick overview of the Wikimedia movement. Um, I'm sure it's raised a couple of questions, uh, so please feel free to get in touch. Um, as mentioned, we do have events uh, throughout this month to um, give you a bit more of an overview, um, teach you how to edit Wikipedia, um, show you how to add references and all that. So I hope that you can attend those uh, if you're able to. Um, but now I'd like to hand over to Rihanna Patrick, tonight's moderator. Thanks, James. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge um, also um, the lands on which I join you virtually from tonight and pay my respects to the traditional custodians and owners of these lands, the Jagera, Yagara and Yugrapal peoples of now so-called Ipswich region of southeast Queensland. I'd like to acknowledge their elders past and present and their continuing connection to the lands, waterways and skies. And as a Torres Strait Islander, I'm acutely aware that I live and work on lands which are not my own um, and to which I have no bloodline too. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first presenter, who is Steve Bunbaji Hodawat. Now, Steve has already mentioned that he's a Lado man from Gun um, Gunana, 
uh, which is Mornington Island in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And Steve currently works for First Nations Media Australia or FNMA as a digitization support officer and provides assistance to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities to assess and manage digitization of their media archives, which as you can imagine is a massive job when you think back to how long Indigenous media has been going in this country. Um, and Steve himself has worked in Indigenous media for over 20 years and has also lived in remote and regional Central Australia for 30 years. Um, don't forget that if you do have any questions for Steve to pop them into the chat as they come up in your head um, and we can ask them to him at the end of all the presentations. So over to you, Steve. <laughs> what are under greetings again? Um, yeah, thanks for the intro and thanks uh, for joining us. I'll try to keep it um, pretty casual and um, just uh, go through, I guess, as uh, Rihanna said, the, um, I guess, uh, mountain of work that we're trying to um, uh, get going towards uh, digitizing um, some of the analog archives. As Rihanna said, I've been with uh, First Nations Media. It used to be um, IRCA, the Indigenous Remote Communications Authority, um, which only serviced um, remote community media organisations in Australia um, up until, oh geez, I'm testing myself now, um, about uh, 2012, uh, which then became First Nations Media, which took in also metropolitan um, and regional areas as well. So. Um, taking in our National Indigenous Television Service, um, as well as print media, Koori Mail, um, which is uh, the pretty much the national Aboriginal newspaper here in Australia. Um, so yeah, I've been with uh, FNMA doing the digitization coordinator, uh, coordinator coordinators role, sorry, um, since September, 2021. And um, yeah, we've just had some funding confirmed at our last uh, national conference um, in October, late October. Um, yep, yeah, we've got some money from the dark side. Um, Rio Tinto has come to the party. Um, and so now we can actually um, work towards uh, expanding um, our digitization service or being able to travel nationally. Um, before we only had ABA funding, very specific NT-based funding, uh, where we couldn't travel outside of the territory uh, to provide our services. But now uh, we're going to go national. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so uh, as part of uh, our role, uh, as I was saying before, um, UNESCO says that by 2025, um, all magnetic media, analog media, on um, the old uh, video cassettes and audio cassettes and film reels or audio reels uh, will be worn out or start to deteriorate by 2025. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a mammoth mission for anyone um, to try and coordinate and then um, get everything digitized. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I stole this image from Wikimedia Commons <laughs> to show some of the um, locations, uh, uh, remote communities um, that, that uh, we service to as well. Um, as you can see in the cen center there is uh, where we're pretty much based in Mbando Alice Springs. And, um, and yeah, so you can see uh, they're trying to get out, uh, only a team of three of us at the moment trying to get out um, to cover all these places. Um, uh, yeah, it does take a bit of work. Um, then we've also got to deal with um, uh, the obsolete media uh, that we're trying to source and players, the old beta cam tapes, uh, mini DV, VHS. Um, so yeah, we're partnering up with um, IATSIS. Um, this is our team here. Uh, Penny Watson's manager of uh, the archiving. Dennis Chuparula, Charles, um, up on the other side of me is our uh, um, Walpri and Madra language speaker um, specialist. Uh, so a couple of the collections that we're working through at the moment, um, one of those comes from the PAW media collection, that's 
PAW is Pintabee and Mudra and Walbury um, nations, um, north northwest of Mbando Alice Springs, uh, going up towards uh, Western Australia. And um, so, yeah, it's crucial that um, uh, Aboriginal people, our, our language speakers, sorry, first language speakers, um, are crucial in being able to um, not only digitize the media, uh, but have that cultural knowledge and, and language skills to be able to um, uh, generate that metadata that no one else um, has. So uh, I've got a bit of a video coming up um, that's that focuses on, um, you know, the importance of having um, First Nations uh, language speakers driving that and, you know, it's it's pretty basic for all of us to know that uh, the communities themselves have to be really driving how that um, uh, data sovereignty happens. Uh, oh yeah, we've also been teaming up with uh, NFSA. You've got Gillian there. Um, used to be First Nations, or well, still is First Nations filmmaker, legendary female um, First Nations filmmaker. Now running the Indigenous unit at the National Film Sound Archive. And um, Mark Denbo, who's setting up um, uh, a new IATSIS facility here in town that we're also going to be um, uh, digitizing from, um, having a nice pad to be able to get all the equipment out and um, everyone coming in to be able to digitize all their media is, um, um, is crucial to be able to try to get it all done. Um, if you're not aware, then some of the um, analog media uh, tapes, these are all videotapes, uh, beta cam, umatic, VHS, VHSC, and mini DV, um, digitizing them using the old analog machines with digital converters. And then um, what, what I guess we're alluding to here is uh, something that isn't as much of a priority for us at the moment, trying to get everything digitized, but um, obviously communities, the importance is being able to access um that media once it is um digitized so yeah i guess um accessing is an, an issue and priority for the peoples it's um it's you know on our on our terms of thinking it's well um you know uh you're not going to have anything to access if you don't get it digitized but then for them it's well if it's digitized how are we gonna get our hands on it um so here's us at the NFSA gallery in Canberra last September. And I think of, oh, this is a little <laughs> cartoon one of our um, Indigimob teammates did up. Uh, Chuparula in the um, NFSA um, archives. And here's a little animation that, that hasn't been put out public yet, but um, yeah, we'll be working on it once we get a place. Oh, sorry, this is Dennis's video. Charles, and then you're gonna work it on first. Video cassette, yeah, mini TV, yeah, mini TV. Ambra bia, wal ambra to video full kanal mada ni. Ambra bia to wal recordo man kanalo. Ayran japo. Why do Yapa have to um uh try to get the um tapes off or onto computer? Yo ambo jo anga say bina lo mada ni. Kanal record mana yang orang jaga sebangga, kalangka kalangka pun kujah merak jago. Aku lagi pernah wargi jago, mungkin jago. Ula jangan kanal kanal tengah pandah, 
Iram jadi dengan saya pakuran kok kimbiu nak pernah. Um, why do you enjoy doing your work? Wal ngaju jo ngambar ba. Ampir ya ada angka pendi menjawab karena try jadi ngajang family. Wal beri paru. Yang akan ngajang o yang wonder paru. Kalau yang awal kita jauh waringi, abli side ni, waringi side family ki. Walau yang mana jenah periangka, dan wadin je akan ambil jadi jenah jenah yang beberapa orang family yang akan perlu nyuruhi acting je, yang akan perlu tuh mana periawar eh, ambil yang kah school orang orang kocang kah, wedding je orang pula pa, dan yang awal je, yang akan nyuruhi orang perlu sports so, yang akan nyuruhi orang nor, mungkin yang akan pakar je ini time mana, ngaju awam lah wi, macam orang orang kan awal kita je lah. Nenjai ni yang kapir ya orang, ambora muncul nenjai ni. Walau ular nak kena ambor banyak nama, yang baju nawar kita je last year, November twenty fifth, two thousand twenty one lah. Yang baju October two thousand twenty two lgu. You are and next month October ah September um November tu, boleh juga na first and first week je orang baju. Sure. So we presented the video um, at uh, First Languages Youth Forum um, just before our national um, First Nations media conference uh, called Converge uh, that we had last, um, yeah, November, I think you said. Um, but yeah, I think it just proves how, how crucial it is that, um, you know, the um, uh, Yapa Aboriginal people um really drive um the digitizing and um links back to uh that data sovereignty as well um do i need to share this one yeah do i get to the next one oh. it's gonna go it's not letting me out now <laughs> oh here we go um yeah as i said so here's me taking some uh, of the old media tapes back to um, PAW Media in Yundamu. Um, here's our setup. We had um, some of the old analog uh, media players. This is presenting at uh, Yundamu School to uh, the WET program, um, some of the Walbury Education Training Trust. Here in Canberra at uh, IATSIS, which is our uh, National Indigenous um, Institute, Archival Institute. And these guys are actually in town at the moment working on our new pad. Probably haven't got um, that much more to add at the moment. Happy to bounce back if. Um, if, if anyone wants to add anything else in. I just wanted to make uh, the point too that um, uh, someone raised on Twitter a while ago now, um, you know, when we talk about being on country, um, for me personally, I, I think that links back to our homelands where we're from. Um, but someone pointed out on Twitter that, um, who actually also works in similar spaces as well with libraries and um, archives, I mean, I don't consider myself, I'm, I come from more the media side. So it's been interesting trying to uh, realize some of the archiving and, and catalog cataloging world and all the metadata and how crucial some of that stuff is. But um, uh, this person really pointed out that, um, you know, we're always on, on country. And I guess this really uh, also applies in the digital space as well. So uh, really, crucial that you know we um consider what's important for us um as you know first nations and mar marginalized groups that um uh that links back to that data sovereignty oh i think i'll finish on this little um little animation i thought i was playing earlier <laughs> so go Ah, 
time to sort out all these old tapes in the storeroom. I can't even think who to call. Or maybe I'll go online and have a look. Ghostbusters. See what I can find. Here we go. First Nations Media Archive. I'll give them a call. Hi, what can I do with these old tapes? We need to get those old stories off them tapes and onto a computer because the tapes will be no good soon. That was easy. <laughs> I'll just go grab a box of tapes to check. It'll be good to get them sorted out. We need to get these ready for digitising and we need to do it in the right way too. Let's go and take a look together. If your story looks like this, you've got old tapes with important stories that you want to keep. Give the First Nations Media Archiving team a call or email archiving at firstnationsmedia.org.au or call 0889 <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve. Hi, I'm Penny. I am Dennis. We're the Archiving Team. Get in touch to talk more about your old tapes. She's going to love that old some of the 70s music or something. <laughs> Sorry, all right, that's it. Um, I'll finish on that note. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve. Um, yeah, I did like the peak funk towards the end. Um, <laughs> wonderful animation and uh, just a great idea. And thank you so much for filling us in on, I guess, the amount of work that you have ahead of you and that timeline that's really ticking down and knowing that a lot of those important conversations, those important songs, important language pieces, uh, a lot of them are still sitting on magnetic tape in some way, shape or form, whether that's real to real or as you showed their videos. And I guess I just had one question because I, I, I just want to be sneaky and sneak one in. Um, and ask you, Steve, but I mean, in the time that you've been doing this, um, what have you discovered uh, when you've been going around of just some of that footage that you get the privilege of seeing? And, and what are those some of those things that you've discovered that some of our Indigenous media organisations have in this country in their archives? Yeah, I guess, um, uh, yeah, obviously, being culturally sensitive to start with um, is a priority for us. Um, and like we say, we're just the conduits in a way to be able to get the digitizing done. We don't retain any of the copyright. Um, everything we get goes back to the communities. Um, it's almost like, you know, we've got the kitchen, we've got the specialized ovens. You just bring the ingredients and, you know, we, we bake the cakes and give them back. It's up to you to slice them up and divvy them out however you want. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's pretty amazing and 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 too we're getting it um pretty much from these remos the remote indigenous media organizations who who um who already knew this was coming or knew to have these archives ready um and in place so you know have the compactus in the middle of the scrub somewhere out in the bush um already in a climate controlled room so so they had that ready and um and most of the stuff we're seeing at the moment so far i mean these are the other cultural considerations as well is um on the restricted um content and then how we go about trying to make sure that um uh that's digitized um in in culturally appropriate processes as well uh, but you know, you're getting like um, Country Road in Walbury. Um, there was a there was a great video we were asked to uh, digitize the Umatic tape, so you can tell uh, pretty much the age of the tape by what format um, it was filmed or recorded on. Uh, so the Umatic tape goes back to late seventies, early eighties. Um, there was a great tape we digitized. Um, that had the old ladies down in northern South Australia, the Anangu Pichanjara, Yankajara lands, where they're um, rounding up all this, um, all this, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, shrub seeds, um, getting all of these shrubs, and then going through this whole process of, uh, you know, shaking them out, and it's all happening. No kitchens, no um, mats, really, just on on you know hard red earth 
um, just grinding out these um, seeds and then the process of, you know, slowly pounding it down, grinding these seeds down. And then this, what, what seems like taking forever. And then the end product was just like this tiny little pikelet shaped um flat damper that all the chichis all the kids are sitting around <laughs> waiting to have this tiny little piece of and it was just sort of it made you realize you know how hard how hard um uh people actually work to to um to get that that good um that good bush tucker and i bet and i bet it would have tasted beautiful but it was just like this tiny little bit <laughs> for that amount of work it was like whew. yeah yeah Oh, I love it. A bit jealous of your job, Steve, but um, thank you so much. And um, I'm seeing questions start to come in. Um, but if you do have a question uh, for Steve on anything that he talked about or anything you wish to know, um, particularly about Indigenous media, um, put it in the chat box and uh, we'll definitely ask that at the end of all the presentations. Um, it is with great pleasure, and I'm so glad because I know what the time difference is right now uh, in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So thank you, Sophia, um, for being here. But our next presenter is Sophia Amore um, Kokini. And Sophia is a Nguyen, Tahitian, Maori, Italian, and Hungarian woman who has worked on projects to increase Wikipedia editing knowledge about Pacific Island artists in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And don't forget, if you have a question for Sophia during her presentation, just put it in the chat and we'll ask it for her after all the presentations. But over to you, Sophia. Oh, thank you so much, Nada. That was awesome. So, ko ne ko Sophia more siale tuhi le lika kukini. Ne fakahingoa he tau mato tu pona fafini ha kumai tahi kiniwe. Mo amore he mai he mato tu pona fafini mai Italian Hungarian. Um, fakahwe ke he atua he lagi. Um, acknowledging the land that I'm on. Thanks to my, uh, giving thanks to my Te Reo Māori and Pacifica ancestors who watch over us tonight um, and the traditional custodians of the Southeast Queensland, the Jagra, the Yaga and Yogafo people. Warm Moana greetings to you all. Okay, so big thanks to Rihanna Patrick for your introduction and to James and Belinda for this privilege to be to speak alongside Steve Bandagi, Hodowat, and Olanio Ulushola Ishola. So my name is Sophia More Siale I know it's very long. Um, I'm a New Zealand born. My mother is Niue and Tahitian, and my father is Maori, Italian, and Hungarian. I call it the fruit salad mix. I'm here to talk to you about my participation in the Pacifica Arts uh, Aotearoa Wiki project started by the fabulous Lisa Moore. So I'm just gonna change the slide now. Cool. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm from Wellington. I reside in a small suburban area called Cannons Creek. It's small but large community, mainly populated by Pacifica people. Despite the smallness, there is 13 churches, eight schools and one college. <laughs> um, yes, let's find a cross. Cool. All right, uh, this slide here shows you only a part of my family that are in Cannons Creek. The rest I couldn't fit on the page. As you can see, I come from a large family, so there's never a dull moment. I grew up with my maternal grandfather that taught us grandkids practical life skills. So by the age of six, all grandkids could catch a fish four different ways with a reel and rod, line and an old stick, mussels, corned beef, potatoes and whatever leftovers we had in the fridge. Um, I come from humble beginnings that brought up the practice of anga whaka niwe, which is the new way, uh, the new way way of life. Sorry. Here we go. Uh, grandma would keep me by her side, making faikai pitako, customary new way and dishes, doing the umu, which is like a fire pit in the ground we used to cook our food, along with many other customary dishes too. Attending church every Sunday was something I never challenged, as I saw it was part of uh, Angahaka New Way. I moved in with my grandmother when university started four years ago, oh, four, for four years, sorry, uh, studying fine arts at Massey University Wellington during my honours and during my honours. Because of living with grandma, Angapaka Nui no longer became a practice but a way of life. 
a way of living. Grandma and her way of being became the inspiration to my work and projects that I took on um, and played a huge part of the involvement um, of Lisa Moore's uh, Pacific Wiki project. Doing things with Angafaka New Wear in mind became my personal research methodology during the study, my studies and wiki projects, taking on Pacifica concepts such as Talanoa and Va, which I'll later go into. Some nice photos there. <laughs> a little background into the Pacific Aotearoa wiki project. This was started by Lisa Moore, as she was aware of the close ties and that existed between various art forms and artists working in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and their family back in the islands. She wondered if there were any Pacifica Wikipedians. She also questioned if there were uh, any demands for Wikipedia to house uh, Pacifica related content. She proposed an initiative to extend information about Creative New Zealand's yearly arts Pacifica Awards to Makarita Urali, who is the Pacifica Arts Manager at Creative New Zealand. Uh, Makarita had attended an edit-a-thon at the Dallas Art Museum, so she had some familiarity with Wikipedia. Uh, Lisa proposed a Wikipedian in residency program that would teach three Pacifica individuals how to edit Wikipedia by creating new articles proposing a pathway for Pacifica people to be creating content by Pacifica for Pacifica. Um, Makarita backed the project as Creative New Zealand Wikipedian in residency with investment funding from their Digital Moana program and sought three people to come on board. These three people are... Dun, da, da, da. There we go. Cool. So these people are Kasi Valu, a recent graduate from Toy Fakari, the New Zealand Drama School, and member of member of choreographer and producer Tupi Loa Loa's company Le Moana Arts. Leilani Siu, a DJ and events manager who was working at Wellington Museum, and myself, an art graduate and Oceanic Tautai internship recipient. Okay. The goals of this project were to increase accessible content about Pacifica artists through Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons and Wikidata, to introduce Wikipedia skills to Pacifica artists, writers and researchers. Oh my goodness, sorry. Uh, the framework was to target uh, achievements for uh, the framework was a target of achievements for each editor, for example, five new C-class Wikipedia articles, at least 50% women, non-binary and gender fluid, um, identifies problem with five existing related articles and fixes the problem stated, learns how to upload images to Wikipedia Commons and Wikipedia articles, and uploads 10 to 20 images to Wikimedia, uh, to Wikimedia Commons, uh, when learns how to create new articles in Wikidata and creates 20 new items with at least 10 statements each. Um, I think it's important for me to note also that this project was paid. Uh, they paid us for our editing and our learning. This fast track interest and commitment to the project and remove barriers such as paying for living expenses. Okay. Uh, ua tala noa, a new way in saying which means don't talk stupid words. Uh, I, I would hear this saying now and then around the house. I used to giggle at this with deeper context and analysis and asking my grandmother what this actually meant. She said, it's a lesson, a lesson in knowing how words can be wielded, how text can change in an instance and can be misconstrued. So the importance of finding where I stood as a Pacifica editor on Wikipedia was just as important to me as my own identity. Creating articles of living people people of minority, people of marginalization, indigenous peoples. Ua tala noa reminded me of the responsibilities that came when composing these articles, to do the research, prove the credibility, to do right by them in their communities. I had at my fingertips the identity of others. I'm unsure if Kasi Valu and Nelani had previous knowledge of Wikipedia before this pilot program, but I knew absolutely nothing. 
editing on Wikipedia was complete jargon, not to mention throughout university, it was completely drilled into us that Wikipedia was not a reliable source to quote from. Um, after a few hilarious breakdowns, a few Zoom calls with Lisa and the others, I settled down, but often became overwhelmed at just how big the gaps were in regards to Pacifica people, but also their customs that is not yet on Wikipedia. Many red links appeared and my, my to-do list became longer and longer. I'm still trying to complete it to this day, but it seems to have added more since then. Um, Lisa knows about the many conversations I have with my family, one being about my grandmother and the concept of notability, something at the time that I had just learned myself. So grandma had given me a list of new way and artists, people back in her time of the 1940s. She proceeds to tell me the narrative of these artists stating where they were born, what, a, what they accomplished for the community and what effect they had on New Way of today. I got so excited until so I clicked and I was like, geez, man, I hope they got notability. <laughs> um, my following questions were, what exhibitions did they hold, Grandma? What uh, awards did they win or what were they a part of? Uh, I could feel her tense up. Um, asking me why I would ask those questions. Yes, they are notable, she's quickly said. Notable to me, your aunties, your family, your family's family, and your family's 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 family. We're talking about our people from nowhere, my people, the people I grew up with, that is not, is that not notable enough? I agreed. I created drafts in honor of them, not yet uploaded to Wikipedia. Um, I'm not sure what's worse, creating a Wikipedia page in honour of them and it being taken down due to lack of notability from lack of online sources or not making one at all. In this instance, my grandmother had so much information to offer, it was unfortunate that there were a lack of web pages to support her and her knowledge that she has. Nowhere along with other Pacifica, our histories are passed down through word of mouth, oral tradition as opposed to written tradition. Wikipedia caters to the written tradition, not necessarily the oral. This made it hard when we try to capture information but then realize the credibility was not there. This was often seen in the articles created. This project helped recognize the difference in how Pacifica artists represent themselves. It's not this, just them that they will make reference to, it's to their whānau, family, it's references to their tepuna, their community, their whakapapa, genealogy. They are bringing their whole positionality to the space. So making sure that Wikipedia catered to this was important for myself to capture because there was my reason and my motivation. Asi Leilani and myself noted, uh, noticed certain repetitive waves that were going on. Uh, either there's not enough different information on our artists, so the articles became rather monotone, robotic, cut and paste. No matter how many times you try to rewrite it, did not cater to their whakapapa, genealogy, to their whenua, their land, whānau, family, and the positionality, um, the, positionality uh, sorry, the positionality that they brought was then gone. The information that is sourced is repetitive. Both of these things did not equal an article that we were happy with. It equaled an article that did not recognize Pacifica artists and their positionality as a whole. This was challenging. This also meant that we had to forget about the set goals in the project and focus on the artists and work with them. We, are all, express we all expressed and felt that time pressure made us look at the development of an article as data. It was just about getting something out there, forgetting that they are human. Time took their narrative away, and if we weren't careful, oh sorry, if we weren't careful enough, as soon as we felt this coming on, it was natural to choose and uh, choose the artist first. Luckily, Lisa understood. For us, fostering the relationship is more important. This is where Angafaka Nui helped me remember the usage of Pacifica concepts such as Samoan Tongan concept called Talanoa. Talanoa means to hold face-to-face -face conversations. It involves fostering connections by establishing secure environments where we value diversity and welcome change that have a purpose. It refers to reducing hierarchy so that when we speak, it's us, not you and I. Talanoa recognizes that individuals, that the individuals we engage to write about have a life form and it honors their story and their positionality. 
This was then another challenge is because this program fell on hard times, such as COVID-19 lockdown. Sometimes face-to-face -face telenor was not there and Zoom calls were not cutting it. Kasi Lenani and I expressed how this challenged our time management along also the effect it had on us, not being able to work together as a team that slowed and led to self-doubt. Another methodology that helped is VAR. Let me keep it on my slides. Cool. Our history, uh, so VAR is our history, present and future. Um, despite our desire to define the VAR, we can safely say that it defines us. It doesn't play a physical shape. The VAR is a space that always exists. Whether we acknowledge it or not, and even when we feel estranged, connects us through all, uh, through all our interactions. It manifests most vividly when we get together and engage in our customs. The, the VAR within Wikipedia was brought out through this project through the practice of color noir, through the relationships built, through the narratives told. It uncovered how much this was needed and magnified the starting point to where we can now progress. It defined our positionality. This pilot program was successful, where Lisa, Kasivalu, Nelani and I have cut ways for now future Pacifica Wiki projects and the new possibilities to come. And just gonna finish it off with this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sophia. That was just absolutely lovely and so beautiful seeing your family as well in those slides. I really enjoyed seeing that and could definitely relate to not being able to fit them onto one slide. <laughs> so Steve and I laughing along with you going, yeah, our family wouldn't fit on uh, one slide either, I don't think. Um, but if you do have a uh, question for Sophia, make sure you put it into the chat. Um, and we'll be asking all those questions at the end. So it's never too late to put a question in there. And our final presenter, um, and I'm just so grateful again that we could have someone um, from Africa, from Nigeria. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if this is right, Shola, that it is, I think, the afternoon there. Um, maybe the time zone is not as bad as it is <laughs> for Sophia, um, who's, who's in the morning. future. <laughs> it's morning. morning Good morning, then. Good morning, then. Good morning, um, how are you? <laughs> but our last presenter is um, Olanio Oluoshola Ishola, um, or Shala for um, Shola for uh, short. And Shola is with Wikimedia User Group Nigeria, who are recording the oral history of languages spoken in Nigeria as part of their Nigerian language oral history documentation project. Um, again, if you have any questions that come up while you're listening to Shola, um, please put them in the chat so that we can ask those at the end. And uh, over to you, Shola. Thank you, Rihanna, and uh, the organizers of this um, uh, program. I'm super excited to be here today, and um, we've been craving for awareness for our languages. And I think this is, a, this is one of the platforms that can help to showcase to the world the diversity that we have in Africa and in Nigeria. When we're talking before this, um, the, the, the real event, I said Nigeria happened to be one of the most diverse country in terms of languages. However, most of those languages are not being optimized. So we, we, we could imagine when we have a language that is over 527, which is 25% of the entire language spoken in Africa. And out of all these 500, only three of the languages are, are, are recognized by the government, especially in education. And also when they are even recognized in the education, they are taught like a subject. We don't use them as a means of teaching. So it's a big problem. So people are being taught in the language that they don't know. People are being taught in official language. And we find that there are challenges in learning from languages that are not your mother tongue. So this is one of the reasons why we are into this project. I'm going to start with a video to showcase Something about the, the language. I hope it's gonna work. Let me try. A day Yoruba ni Suba Emma Pay the Yoruba Po.
mo je omo bibi ilu secretary ni ipinle oyo eh secretary a wa lati ilu fun ni ipinle osun eh ede o kere ati di ado o o sun mo rada da so be na lu si be le oyin an lu ko tun ma do an bi aduna na tin soro gbugbu ran le de o me ikiti iwa kan na le ninu ran thank you i'm going to then go to my to the slide for the day so um the project is looking at a unique way to keep a life uh, to keep a language alive so what is the project all about so there are three key components of the project. And the project is supported by the Wikimedia Foundation. As Elias said, there are over 500 languages in Nigeria, which represent 25% of the entire language in Africa. Our key objective is to produce an audiovisual of the 500 language in such a way that they can be used to enrich Wikipedia project with free licensed content to support research and education purposes. Then we, the team um, comprises of language experts, archivists, and the likes. So these are the three major components of, I mean, the three key areas that um, we set up to keep the project running. So the main aspect, why do we, why do we uh, embark on the project? As earlier mentioned, a country with over 25% language spoken in the entire Africa. Eight out of 10 of these languages are threatened with extinction. Only three of these over 500 languages are recognized by the government in education. So it's like the other language do not exist. And also, quite a number of these languages you can't find their speakers. So it is also part of the major problems that we envisage and that we intend to solve. Aside from that, English is the official language in Nigeria. And basically it is used for business transactions. And this also cut into the challenges facing um, um, indigenous language because any other language that is not official, others are not recognized. So majority of the speakers of these languages channel more of their knowledge, I mean, more of their energy in learning the official language to the detriment of the indigenous language, because that is the language of survival. English is the language of survival. Since it's the language of business, it is what everyone is looking at. No, what then what did we do? Now, this is our story. We started with documentation of 50 oral history of Nigerian languages by traveling to the southwest of Nigeria. Nigeria is, uh, we have over 200 people in population and the country is divided into six major geopolitical zones. We have the southwest where we have the Yorubas. We have the southeast, we have to have the Igbos. We have the south-south where we have the component part of Hebrew and some other languages. And we have this north where we have the Londoners, where Hausa is actually spoken. Within these uh, regions, there are, there are many languages that have been spoken. So we decided to divide the country into six geopolitical zones for the purpose of traveling. So, so far we have done over 100. And in doing that, we started from the Southwest because that is the, that is the region where majority of the, of the team members reside. So we started with that and we focused mainly on the Yorubas. And sometimes last year, we traveled to the South-South, the Cross River State, where we also document over 60 languages to complement the, uh, the earlier 50 that we have documented in the, south, in the Southwest. So what do we do to create, to, to, to ensure that the languages are, 
uh, uh, I mean, the awareness is, I mean, to create better awareness for the language. We have a landing page after the, the document, after the audiovisual already been uploaded to commons. I don't want to go through the technicality of the commons and the likes. The language after being produced by the cinematographers, we got it um, uploaded on commons and we created the landing page. We are people that are interested in listening to those languages can go to, I mean, to view them. And also we have used the language, the videos on over 150 relevant Wikipedia pages in different languages. So what do we do? I'm gonna show us in the presentation. And um, we'll also ensure that the video has been uh, subtitled in, I mean, in 12 languages. The video caption has been subtitled in 12 languages. We, we intend to do more, but these are the languages that we have access to at the moment. Okay. On Wiki, we have done quite a lot of work on Wiki. So what do we do on Wiki? We identify where the video, the language in the video that we have documented, we identify Wiki page. A Wiki page where such language has been published, then we make use of the video. If you see the screen, I mean my screen, um, this, is, this video is about Ibadan language. And we have a page for Ibadan on Wikipedia. So we inserted the video on this page. So when you read about Ibadan, you can as well listen to someone using the indigenous language of Ibadan to talk about the story about the Ibadan. So we have used this in over 150 wiki pages of different languages. And um, we, the project also helped in bringing together volunteers to help in contributing to creating new articles about language where we have their videos, but does not have a Wikipedia page. So we ensure that volunteers identify those language. We create the, we create the such a Wikipedia page. And uh, we also ensure that that page is translated into other languages aside from English. And then we use the corresponding videos on each of them. So this is the gallery that I mentioned earlier. The gallery is like a one, a one-stop gap where you could see the over 100 languages. Some are subtitled in English, some are not subtitled. So you could click on them and listen to them. Then um, another thing we do is, oh, okay, I think we also ensure that on weekly basis, these videos are, are showcased on our social media handles. Because one of the core objectives is, even after we might have produced the video, we want to ensure that there is awareness. Because even the speaker of some of this language don't even know that they exist. We got, an, we, we, there was an example of someone in the US that called, he is aware that he, he speaks this language, he's from this particular language, I mean, area. But he does not know, he hasn't heard the language. Through this project, he was able to listen to the language and then he came to us. And this is an example of what we want to achieve. We intend to publish this video across the globe. So the speakers of this video that probably are not domiciling in Nigeria or do domicile anywhere else can listen to them and can also help in supporting the promotion of the language. Okay, now another thing we have been doing is I and my team, we've been donating these videos to institutions, especially uh, educational institution. We have donated over all the languages to uh, at least three core universities in Nigeria to support researches in those languages and also and other related relevant purposes. So it has been the, the, the feedback from this has been quite encouraging because many of these institutions are looking for funding to do something similar. But we have done it and we are providing it. We need a platform where the, where the, where the video could reach more people. Then I would believe with this uh, collaboration, many of these institutions have even helped to push. We're also looking at talking to mission aligned organizations 
like uh, Nigeria, I mean, like embassies in Nigeria. We want to, we are looking at um, how to partner with embassies to, to donate the video to them so that it can also help to push it to their people, to learn about the history of our languages. So that is all we have been doing. I want to thank you all for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shola. I have been wanting to hear more about your project as well for a while. So it was so lovely um, to be able to have you along. And I mean, wow, you've done so much. Um, over 150 relevant wiki pages. You've subtitled those videos into 12 different languages and the work just keeps continuing. So thank you so much. I do wish to just thank uh, Shola, Sophia and Steve again for your presentations um, and for giving us this time.